Alrighty, so we are at the world's largest nuclear power plant. Douglas Point Nuclear Power Plant began generating electricity in 1967 and continued until 1984. This joint project between Atomic Energy of Canada Limited and Ontario Hydro was the first commercial scale Canadian deuterium uranium reactor. The nuclear power demonstration reactor had proven the can-do concept in 1962 and the 200 megawatt Douglas Point plant demonstrated the can-do nuclear power plant could be scaled up for commercial power generation. Canada is a world leader in nuclear. In Ontario, we have three plants. We've got Darlington, which you have to check out if you have not seen it. I've done a video on that. Pickering and the Bruce, which we're at now. And we're gonna go see. The Bruce is privately owned by Bruce Power and they lease the land from the government. Look free, no money. So that's the Bruce over there. Largest nuclear power plant in the world. Eight reactors. We got the timeline here. So construction begins on Douglas Point in the 60s. Bruce B, 76. 77 were first units. Bruce A units one and two were placed into service. And then 78, 79, three and four went in. Douglas Point is shut down and unit six comes online. Unit five is placed into service. Unit seven is placed into service. And then finally in 87, the last of the eight generators. There's a plant in South Korea that produces more megawatts, but they only have seven generators. And that's the largest nuclear power plant by volume production in the world. For facility size and number of generators, the Bruce wins because it has eight versus seven. Dismantling of the Bruce A heavy water. Unit two at Bruce A is shut down, placed into layup. Unit one placed down, shut into layup. Ontario Hydro is divided into five successor companies. British Energy, this is the site. Bruce is formed and assumes operation and control of the site. History is made on Unit 2 with the first successful replacement of a steam generator in a Canadian nuclear plant. A protocol agreement is signed between the Ojibwe Nation, the Seguin and Ojibwe. Uh, Bruce Power responds to Fukushima event by reviewing and upgrading emergency response capabilities in 2011. Bruce Power signs a long-term agreement with the province to refurbish units 3 to 8, extending the life up to 2064. That's the Bruce B. Douglas Point. That was the first one. Radioactive waste storage areas. Facilities. Visitor center. That's where we are. The Bruce A and the alternative steam line system. Primary objective of the candy reactor is to generate heat, which is then used to produce steam. This is the same as every turbine we've looked at, power generation turbine. Many systems work together and others work independently to control reactors and keep it safe. Controlling the reactor, cooling, the fueling, and containing the radiation are three fundamental safety functions of the system. The Kandu reactor design has two independent, fast-acting shutdown systems that are physically separate and have their own power supplies and monitoring equipment. Shutdown system one consists of neutron absorbing rods that drop into the reactor automatically and stop the chain reaction if something irregular is detected. Shutdown system number two in injects a neutron absorbing liquid into the reactor to immediately stop the chain reaction. The control rods here help control the reaction. Containment, six feet thick, reinforced concrete. Radioisotopes are inserted into the Bruce B's reactors for a period of up to two years. When removed, they are processed and used to treat cancer and sterilize medical devices around the world. The vacuum building, so this is, if there was a leak or anything or a breach in containment, that the vacuum building is where it would go. So. The vacuum building would draw in condensed steam in the unlikely event it was released inside the station. So you have the vacuum building here. You've got reactors. Fueling machine tunnel for the fuel. And then the vacuum building. So if any of these were to leak at any time, they can just suck the steam into the vacuum chamber. Heat transport system using heavy water, which, has, which is deuterium. The heat transport system brings the heat produced by the reactor to the steam generators and aids 
in keeping fuel cool. Normal water is heated into steam, which is used to drive the turbines and generate electricity. The steam is cooled using lake water and the condensate is returned to the steam generators in a closed circuit. Nuclear fission and the reactor. Atoms are constructed like miniature solar systems. At the center of the atom is the nucleus. Orbiting around it are electrons. The nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons, very densely packed together. Hydrogen, the lightest element, has one proton. The heaviest natural element, uranium, has 92. The nucleus of an atom is held together with great force. When bombarded with a neutron, it can be split apart in a process called fission. The uranium atoms are so large that the atomic force that binds it together is relatively weak, making uranium good for fission. So then this is the actual reactor itself. So it's got all the numbers and then the corresponding pieces. Steel ball shielding. The can-do reactor. This is a replica of the Calandria. In real life, it's about six meters long and seven meters across. It contains 480 channels as well as the moderator. And heavy water, deuterium, is the moderator. And you can see the fuel channels and then the control rods and they also have the gas as well for the control. Fuel channel assembly. Feeder coupling, shield plug, shielding sleeve, spacer. That's where all the magic happens. The can-do reactors of Bruce Power have 480 horizontal fuel channels that individually contain several bundles of natural uranium. The fuel bundle is approximately 50 centimeters long and 10 centimeters in diameter. The channels are unique assemblies represented by this display that consist of a pressure tube, two end fittings, and associated hardware. The assemblies connect to a piping system that allows heavy water to transfer heat from the fissioning uranium atoms to the boilers. The heat is then used to turn water to steam, which then drives electricity producing turbine generators. The fuel channel assembly allows for on-power refueling. Remotely controlled refueling machines are able to log onto each end of the channel, either delivering new fuel or receiving used fuel for storage in water-filled bays. On-power refueling is something that gives candy reactors an advantage over other reactors that have been shut down to refuel. Most reactors operate for up to 18 months before they need to be shut down and completely refueled again. Can-do reactors, on the other hand, have the ability to add and remove relatively small amounts of fuel while at full power. Bruce A and B have three refueling machine systems. Each system consists of two fueling machines and other related support equipment, which is located on a transport trolley. The trolley travels on two sets of rails in the fueling duct, delivering the fueling machine system to the required reactor. The first of a kind BRIMS tool conducts testing on fuel. Calandria tubes. Each Calandria tube is loaded with 12 fuel bundles and capped with an end fitting. CANDU stands for Canada Deuterium Uranium. So this is it, guys. So you've got the fuel channels here, right? Fuel, moderator, fueling machine, your fuel bundles in here, and then your fuel channel. CANDU pressurized heavy water reactors have been safely operating for more than 50 years. The CANDU reactor has a number of unique design features and characters not seen in other reactors. A reactor core made of 700 small diameter fuel channels rather than one huge pressure vessel. Heavy water, D2O, for the moderator and coolant. Two separate low pressure moderators and high pressure fuel cooling systems. Reactivity devices that are located in the cool low pressure moderator and are not subject to high temperatures natural uranium fuel. So this is how the whole thing works. So there's a high pressure turbine, low pressure turbine, generator, switch yard, and the condenser. All the water condenses, comes back down through here and it's self-circulating system. Nuclear accounts for over 50% of the province's power and they use the lake water for cooling. The uranium fuel for reactors is produced in Canada. It's a heavy metal, one of several naturally occurring radioactive elements. It occurs in most rocks at concentrations of 2 to 4 parts per million. The most common type is uranium-238, 99.28% purity, followed by uranium-335. U-235 is fissile. When a U-235 atom splits inside a nuclear reactor, it releases heat. It also releases 2 to 3 subatomic particles called neutrons. The neutrons strike the uranium atoms, causing them to fission and release more heat and more neutrons within the controlled chain reaction. Uranium is the heaviest of naturally occurring elements. Uranium dioxide is compressed and sintered into small ceramic pellets, which are sealed inside small tubes and assembled into fuel bundles, the size of a small fire log. One reactor bundle powers 100 homes. The reactors at Bruce contain 5,760. Canada produces about 20% of the world's uranium. As common in the Earth's crust as tin, uranium is 40 times more abundant than silver. 
So you can see we got some in BC, but it's pretty much all over Canada we got uranium here. Yukon, Northwest Territories, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan's got a lot of uranium though. Saskatchewan's known for that. And the heavy water is heating the light water and the light water produces the steam. Deuterium oxide, D2O, or heavy water as it is known, is the lifeblood of Bruce's power candy reactors. Heavy water occurs naturally in all bodies of water. In Lake Huron, one part of every 7,000 parts of ordinary water is heavy water. Heavy water is an extra neutron in the atomic nucleus, which makes it weigh about 10% heavier than ordinary water. And you've got melting points, so they're slightly different. pH, what does it do? Heavy water. Essentially, heavy water has two jobs at Bruce. It serves as the moderator to sustain a controlled chain reaction inside the reactor, which creates heat. It serves as a coolant to transfer the heat from the uranium fuel to the reactor and steam generators. The heat boils ordinary water to steam, which drives the electricity producing turbine generators. You can see the heavy water goes into the light water steam generator, heats the light water, which produces steam, which powers the generator. How is it made? Heavy water was produced at the Bruce Heavy Water Plant from 1972 to 1997. And the plant used a complex process involving water from the lake, steam energy, hydrogen sulfide, vacuum distillation to react and purify the heavy water. So light water from Lake Huron comes in and then they have enriching units, which is water and hydrogen sulfide. Then it gets transferred to the distillation tower and can do great heavy water. So it's basically the heavy water heats the normal water, which produces steam, which powers the turbine, and they get their heavy water from Lake Huron. So they'll never run out of water because you have one of the largest lakes in the entire world, which is, supplies you with heavy water. This is one of the most sophisticated power generation facilities in the entire world. Heavy water is not radioactive, but it becomes radioactive during its time in the reactor. Deuterium atoms that absorb neutrons change in a radioactive substance called tritium. Tritium is not very penetrating, but like many substances, it can be a health hazard if absorbed or ingested. Tritium decays as it gives off energy, eventually turning into helium. Unstable atom has too much energy in its nucleus. That's what radioactivity basically is on a fundamental level. Constantly trying to rearrange itself like moving people out of the room, it's trying to become a more stable atom. It does this by emitting a burst of energy or radiation in the form of alpha or beta particles or gamma rays. This is also known as radioactive decay. And that's why it's dangerous for us because they're off gas all this stuff. And you have terrestrial radiation, uranium, thorium, radium, air, water, vegetation, all contain radiation. You got cosmic radiation. Our bodies produce radiation, heat, human-made sources of radiation. There are four basic types of radiation. Alpha particles are produced from the radioactive decay of heavy elements such as uranium. Beta particles are fast-moving electrons emitted by many radioactive elements. They can travel five meters in air and one centimeter in tissue. Gamma rays are electromagnetic radiation similar to X-rays. Gamma rays travel at the speed of light and can penetrate long distances in air and tissue. Several centimeters of lead or meters of water are needed for typical gamma rays. Neutrons are, are neutral particles without charge that are very penetrating. Their interactions with atoms can give rise to alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. And neutrons can be stopped by thick masses of concrete, water, or paraffin. Oh, you can see the radiation based off the, on the different types. Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. The reactors at Bruce Power are enclosed in thick concrete vaults accessible only by airlocks and when the reactors are shut down for maintenance. There's the suit. How is it handled? Low level waste is shipped inside plastic bags in sealed containers for storage above ground. Concrete buildings at the Western Waste Management Facility, which is operated by Bruce Power. Intermediate level waste is transported in specifically reinforced containers for storage in steel lined in ground structures. Cobalt 60. Cobalt 60 say Bruce Power produces more than just electricity. Thanks to decades of Canadian innovation, Bruce Power also produces a medical isotope, Cobalt 60, a radiation source used to kill germs and fight cancer. Can do reactors use adjuster rods to increase or decrease reaction power. Normally these rods are made from stainless steel, but the Bruce B Can do reactor uses adjuster rods packed with Cobalt 59 pellets which are transformed into cobalt-60 as they absorb neutrons. Cobalt-59 atom is stable. When it absorbs an extra neutron, it becomes cobalt-60 atom. It becomes unstable and emits gamma rays. It only takes two years inside a reactor for cobalt-59 pellets to transform into cobalt-60. 
At that point, the adjuster rods are carefully removed and stored underwater. Water is a very simple and effective way to shield workers. Underwater, charged particles move quickly through the water, more quickly than light itself, creating a beautiful blue glow known as Sharenkov light. Using long tools, workers disassemble the rods and arrange individual bundles for shipping inside specifically divine flax. At the processing site, Cobalt 60 pellets are removed from the bundles and reassembled into products for medical use. So they mine the cobalt from copper and nickel ores, manufacture it into Cobalt 59 slugs at the Kamiko plant in Coburg, Ontario. Cobalt 59 is turned into Cobalt 60, and then it gets shipped to hospitals. They use it to fight cancer, sterilize, See, the Bruce is privately owned by Bruce Power and they lease the land from the government. And as you can see, we've also got a wind farm at the same time. So we've got nuclear power and wind farms going on in the same spot. This is Huron Wind. It's the first commercial wind farm in Canada. It's run by Bruce Power. That's gonna be it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we're gonna have more to come in the future. If you like this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe and Sasquatch Prospector out.